Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat in which we would look at buying on margin, a topic that's covered in an essentials or principles of investment, graduate or undergraduate. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,700 plus accounting, auditing, tax, finance, as well as Excel tutorial. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, put them in playlist. If they benefit you, it means they might benefit other people connect with me on instagram on my website farhatlectures.com you will find additional resources to complement and supplement your accounting as well as your finance education your cpa and cfa exam so if you're looking to add points to your exam professional certification check out my website so buying on margin what is buying on margin simply put when you want to buy stocks or securities from your uh, from your broker your broker will give you more money. Well, that sounds good. Can you take that money? Not really. You could just buy with it, okay? So when purchasing securities, investors have, have easy access to a secured debt financing called broker's call loans. What does that mean? It means you can borrow money against against your securities to buy more securities. Now, I, I would rephrase. Sometimes you can take it out in cash, but that's not what we are talking about here because I just said you can't take it out in cash, you can. So when you take advantage of this loan, it's called buying on margin. It means you are using the money to buy on margin. That's simply what it is. You put $5,000 in the bank. The bank would say, you put $5,000, we're gonna put an additional $5,000 in your bank account. And now you have, so this is yours, and this is the broker. But it's under your control, $10,000, your purchasing is $10,000. So the margin in the account is the portion of the purchase contributed by the investor. So this is the margin. The first 5,000 is called the margin. The second 5,000 is borrowed. Borrowed means it's a loan. And guess what? When somebody gives you money, they expect you to pay interest. So you have to pay interest on that loan. So that's another source of revenue for the broker. So the broker will borrow the money from banks at the at the call money rate remember we talked about the call money rate there's a there's a rate for that to finance these purchases and they charge you interest obviously because they borrowed the money plus a service charge so if they borrow the money at three percent they might lend it to you at six percent or five percent so they will obviously they'll have to pay back three and they will pocket the difference all securities purchased on margin must be maintained with the brokerage firm in the street name think about it you're not gonna go to Merrill Lynch buy stocks on margin okay use their money then transfer those stocks to your fidelity account that's not gonna be acceptable okay because the money is you you you, you bought the shares on margin now if you have shares at Merrill Lynch securities at Merrill Lynch and you would like to transfer them to fidelity that's okay as long as you did not buy them on margin why because the securities that you have at Merrill Lynch they are they are a collateral for the margin so if you are taking away your, your money the collateral is gone so what they do they sell the shares then they give you your portion which is your margin portion that you can do whatever you want with it okay the board of governors of the federal reserve system limit the extent to which stock purchases can be financed using margin loan simply put here's what the here's what are the rules right now the current initial margin requirement is 50 percent meaning that at least 50 percent of the purchase must be paid in for cash so when you buy something you have to pay 50 percent now that's not true for all securities for certain securities you have to buy you have to pay more if the securities are risky but generally speaking you have to pay at least 50 percent from your own money okay and the broker will finance the other 50. the best way to illustrate this is to to work an example just give me a moment there's something called the percentage margin you have to know what is the percentage margin is the ratio so it's like ratio means it's it's one number divided by the other of the net worth or equity net worth or equity I'm just going to use equity because you should be familiar with the term equity and I'll define equity in a moment divided by or the equity of the account to the market value of the securities how much do you have equity divided by the market value that's basically what it is equity divided by the market value and so what is equity do you know what equity is equity is assets minus liabilities what is your equity if you have ten thousand dollar in your bank account and you have three thousand dollar in loans you have a net equity of seven thousand that's your equity or your net worth 
So that's what equity is. Assets minus liabilities. Hopefully you know this. Suppose an investor initially pays six thousand uh, pays six thousand dollar toward the purchase of a ten thousand dollar worth of stocks. So they bought one hundred share. Each share is worth a hundred. They contributed six thousand. They borrowed the remaining. What does that mean? Well, what do they have in their hands? Well, they have one hundred shares times one hundred dollars. Those are the assets. They have ten thousand dollar worth of assets of which of these of which four thousand are liabilities or loans well what's the net worth the net worth is six thousand if i ask you what is the percentage margin well it's the this is the equity assets minus liability the formula is equity divided by assets the assets are ten thousand so the percentage margin is sixty percent so this is how it works so from a balance sheet perspective, assets and liabilities, and hopefully you are familiar with that. If not, you need to go to my uh, accounting uh, lectures on my website or on my YouTube. You have 10,000 worth of assets, worth of stocks. You have loans from the broker, 4,000. 10,000 minus 4 gives you equity of 6,000. And this is basically how we compute the initial percentage margin, 60%. So you, you, you come up with more than 50, you paid 60%. Okay, but you have to pay at least 50. Now, what happened if the price declined to $70? So what happened, the price was 100 initially, the price declined to 70. Well, if the price declined to 70, the value of your stocks are 7,000. Your loan will stay the same. Well, guess what? If your stocks went down 3,000, your account, your equity will go down by 3,000 because 7,000 of assets should equal 7,000 of liabilities and equity. Okay, so this is what would happen. So your your value of the stock is 7,000. This will stay the same and your equity will go down because what happened is you lost 3,000. Now what would happen? The assets and the account fall by a full percentage in the stock value. So, so does the equity. So now if you want to calculate your percentage margin, it's your net value, which is your equity of 3,000 divided by the market value of your stocks, which are 7,000, now your percentage margin is 43%. Your margin is 43. So it was 60, now it's down to 43. Didn't we say that the Federal Reserve Bank said there's a 50%? That's initially. When you buy it initially, you have to put up 50%. Now it fell below 50%. So now we need to know what happened if it keeps on falling. Let's think about this for a moment. What happened if your stock value goes down to four thousand dollar so if the value of the stock keeps goes down to 40 and your value is four thousand four thousand your broke your loan is four thousand and your equity is zero basically you are wiped out and that's under those circumstances do you think the broker would allow you to get to get to there and the answer is no because once you fall below four thousand the owner equity becomes negative simply put once you go below four thousand if the if, if the rate if you have three thousand five hundred then you have negative five hundred of equity and this is taken away from the broker do you think the broker is going to let you do that absolutely not okay so the value of the stock is no longer sufficient to to cover the loan from the broker they don't wait all the way until you got the four thousand what they do to guard against that possibility because remember stock dropped down very quickly once the stock starting to drop they don't wait until you are wiped out you are down to four thousand because after four thousand now you are losing their money what they do is if the percentage margin falls below the maintenance level a certain level called the maintenance level once it falls below a certain level and each firm will have a different maintenance for different stocks. The broker will issue a margin call. So once it falls below that certain percentage, they'll tell you, look, you have two options. You have to give us more cash or we're going to sell your position, liquidate your position, which require the, the investor to add more cash or the securities or securities. You add more cash or stocks so you can transfer stocks from another account or you have to sell your stock and turn them into cash and give them back their money. Okay, so what happened if you don't act? You know, I don't have money to pay. I don't want to sell. Well, the broker will sell your stocks from the account to pay off enough of the loan to restore the percentage to the maintenance level because they said, look, we have a maintenance level. We cannot fall below it. Once you fall below it, we need to protect ourselves. You either give us money, give us stocks, additional stocks from somewhere, or we're going to sell if you don't do that. Okay. So let's take a look at how we compute this. Suppose the, the, the maintenance margin is 30% for a debt firm, for that stock. How far could the stock fall below the investor would 
get a margin call. Margin call is simply, literally, a call. They will call you or they will send you an email. Now they, they can they call you or they send you an email. Before they used to call you, especially if your account is large. Now they would send you an email and they would still send you a letter. But the letter, it's too late sometime by the time you get the letter. So here's how we compute this. Let P, the price of the stock, the value of the investor shares and is then is 100 times P. So P is the price of the stock because we want to look for the price of the stock. So 100 P is the 100 shares times the price. And the equity in the account is 100 P minus the loan. So this is the equity in the account. 100 shares times the price we don't know minus the loan. So this is the equity. This is the equity. The percentage margin, the percentage margin is the equity divided by the price of the stock, 100 times P. And we're going to set this equal to 0.3. So what we do now, we just solve for the equation. How do we, hopefully you know how to solve for the equation. We cross multiply, we say 0.3 times 100 P equal to 100 P minus 4,000. 0.3 times 100 P is 30 P equal to 100 P minus 4,000. Basically, we just, you know, um, Let's subtract 30, uh, yeah, let's subtract 30p from each side. What we're gonna end up with is negative 70p equal to negative uh, 4,000. Just multiply by negative, uh, negative one, 75p equal to 4,000. Sorry, not 75, 70p. 70p equal to 4,000. P equal to 4,000 divided by 70. The price is 57.14. So simply put, once the price of the stock gets to 57.14, you're going to get a phone call. Okay? Because remember, to come down to 40, the price has to go down to 40. They don't wait until you get to 40. At 70, at $57.14, you'll get a call. Look, you either come up with more money to bring it above 30, or we're going to sell your stock. Simply put, we're going to sell your stock. Okay? Now, Suppose that the maintenance margin is 40%. How far can the can the stock price drop before the investor gets a margin call? Well, what does that mean? It means you have 100 shares times the price. We don't know what the price is, minus 4,000. That's your that's your equity. And you're going to divide this equity by your the value of the stocks, 100 times P equal to 0.4. Now, again, you cross multiply 0.4 times 100 P equal to 40. Basically, what it kind of boils down to is P equal to 4,000 divided by 60. And this should equal... Four thousand divided by 60 is uh, 66.67. If the, if the margin is 40%, by the time you get to 60, but once the price drops to 66.67, you're going to get a phone call or an email or notification. Look, you know, you're, you, you, you are at the maintenance level. Give us money. Uh, send us money. Give us additional stocks or we're going to sell enough shares. We're going to sell enough of these 100 shares. So where this becomes 0.4 or above. So this is how it works. Okay. Now, why do people buy on margin? So why do people buy on margin? Obviously, it's a greed because you, if you're bullish about something, if you're bullish means you think it's going to go up, you just, you don't only use your money, you borrow more money because you want to increase your return. You wish to invest an amount greater than the amount that you have. It's basically greed. You achieve a greater upside potential. But look, come, here comes the risk. There also you are faced with a greater downside risk because you're not only losing your money, you're losing your money and the firm's money. Suppose an investor is bullish on Fincor top Fincor stock, which is selling for one hundred dollar per share. An investor with ten thousand dollar expect to uh, expect the expect the, the price to rose by thirty percent. So if you invest ten thousand dollar, the price increase by thirty percent, you will get thirty percent return. Assume you're confident about this. What you do is, you know what? I'm not gonna only invest 10,000. I'm gonna borrow $10,000 to invest in that stock. So here's what happened. You did not only have 10,000, now you have 20,000 to invest. Now you have 20,000 because you borrowed an additional 10,000. You can buy 2,000 share. Assuming an interest rate on the margin is 9%. So the money that you borrowed, you have to pay 9%. What will be the investor's rate of return Again, ignoring dividend, if the stock goes up to 30, 
percent by the year end so you held the stock for a for a year it went up 30 percent so here's what's going to happen if it went up 30 percent the 200 shares will be worth 26,000 because they went up 30 percent 3,000 for each 10,000 now here's what's going to happen you're going to pay off 10,900 you're going to have to give back the original the the ten thousand dollar you have to give it back plus you have to give them you have to give back ten thousand times 0 0.09 you have to pay interest of 900 so you have to pay back 10,900 and and you're going to leave with you 15,100 which is the 26,000 the value of the stock minus what you paid back so the rate of return in this situation you made 51 percent 51 percent but that's pretty risky that's pretty risky because let me show you what happened if the stocks does not move and if the stocks drops so let's see this example again on an excel sheet so this way i can break everything for you a little bit more in detail so let's take a look at these figures a little bit more in detail so you understand what's going on here initially you had ten thousand dollar in your pocket you decided to borrow an additional ten thousand as a result you have twenty thousand dollar ready to be invested that twenty thousand dollar grew to be twenty six thousand because it grew thirty percent here's what's going to happen you you are up to you you are up to 36 percent uh, 30 30 percent at 26 thousand you have to pay back the ten thousand dollar that you borrowed and you have to pay back the interest remember the interest it's going to be nine hundred dollars which is because you borrowed ten thousand dollar times nine percent so you have to pay back in total ten thousand nine hundred so if you pay back in total ten thousand nine hundred what you're going to be left with is uh left with is um uh, 15,100 you left with 60 15,100 and your original money is 10,000 so let's see how this plays out you so you have done? to pay back almost, almost so you have oh. to pay back uh, you have to pay back an interest and principal 10,900 your interest is 900 therefore your net return is 15,100 so this is where the 15,100 came from so a fifth I'm sorry, 5,100 is your net return because, you know, you made 15,100 from uh, from 10,000. Therefore, this is your net return. If you take your net return divided by the original amount, you made 51%. So this is another way to see how you made 51%. Let's take a look at this same example, assuming your, your stock did not move. So again, you have $10,000. You borrowed an, an additional ten thousand dollar. The stock went nowhere in this scenario, so the, it end up to be twenty thousand. You have to pay back ten thousand nine hundred. So what you did, because you had to pay in, an additional nine hundred in interest, you lost nine hundred dollars. You lost nine hundred dollars. Therefore, your rate of return is nine negative nine percent. Although the stock did not go up or down, you still lost. The money that you invested for a year remember this example assuming you waited for a full year now let's see what happened if you if the stock went down 30 percent you have ten thousand initially you borrowed another ten thousand now you have twenty thousand to invest the stock went down the stock went down thirty percent now you have now you have fourteen thousand dollar you have to pay back ten thousand nine hundred 10,900 remember the interest is $900 now your net return is 6,900 so how did they come up with the net return 6,900 remember for each 10,000 you lost 30% so you lost 3,000 on your 10,000 you lost 3,000 on the brokers 10,000 that's 6,000 then you had to pay interest of 900 your total losses are 6900 your total losses are 6900 from an investment that you originally have 6 10000 now your return is negative which is negative 69 notice if you lose if you lose you would lose more than what if you want so buying on margin is a risky risky business that's the point that i'm that's the point that i'm trying to make now that's risky and what else is risky is short sales a topic that we will discuss next on so the next session we would look at short sale short sales as always please like this recording share it put it in playlist and don't forget to visit my website farhatlectures.com if you want additional resources good luck study hard and stay safe